This Pet X Talk is brought to you by Pet World Media Group, your partner in all things pet media. Additional funding and considerations provided by Nature of Pets, Found Animals, and Dogwise Publishing. Are you ready to be empowered? Then join us for this Pet X Talk. Hi, I'm Joey Bellani, known as the Dog Father on Animal Radio. I've been in the pet grooming industry since 1974, so I'm actually dating myself here. And the age-old question that I always get is, what's the importance of having a well-groomed dog? And you know what? It's more than the obvious. The obvious is, of course, it's a reflection upon me. I mean, you want to go out there and get your hair cut and look good and dyed and, 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 and look striking. Well, you know what? Your pet's a reflection of you, but that's the obvious. The things that people don't think about is this. First off, let's start at the puppy stage. When you start grooming your dog as a puppy, what ends up happening is, is you develop a great bond with them because you're brushing, you're combing, you're doing things with your pet that you wouldn't normally do. You're feeling in the feet, you're looking at the nails, you're checking the ears. So what you're doing is you're building this bond that not only is a bond with you and the family, it becomes, it becomes something that's good for your professional groom because now as your dog starts to go to the groomer, instead of just being happy walking in the door and then hating the whole process after that, what happens is they know what's going on a little bit and they feel more comfortable so they like the whole process because remember this if you have a dog that's 10 years old 12 years old 14 years old for the most part those dogs are going out every six weeks and they're going to get their hair cut you don't want this to be a stressful experience especially in the older years because stress and grooming actually and i hate to talk about this but it's very true Dogs that get stressed in their old, older years sometimes don't come back from the grooming. It happens. I mean, so to get the dog prepared at a young age and take that stress away for the rest of its life, because that's what it's going to do, makes a big difference. The other thing which is extremely important is when your dog goes and gets professionally groomed, or when you do it yourself, you're you're noticing things that you probably would never notice before. I mean, it's not every day where you're looking underneath your dog's tail or looking in the private areas. But when you're grooming your pet, you have to because you got to brush in there, you got to get in there, and, and, you gotta, and you'll notice these things. Same thing with looking in the ears. Most pet owners don't look in their dog's ears, so they don't know the development of an ear infection. They don't know if there's a lump gum coming up. They don't know about the moles. You don't know how many times as a professional groomer that I've worked on a dog and said, Mrs. Jones, Fluffy has a lump underneath its arm. Maybe you should have it checked. And Mrs. Jones would go to the veterinarian, it would get checked, and it would come back that it was a cancerous growth, but caught a lot of times in the very early stages. So it was taken out and Fluffy was able to live a long life after that. And the thanks and the rewards of that. And that was all because of grooming. You see, us as groomers, we see the pet more than anyone else outside of the general family. And we see them in a more intimate surrounding because what I've just spoken to you about, looking under the tail, looking at the private areas, looking in the ears, just cutting the nails. The importance of having a pet's nails trimmed, I think a lot of people actually don't know. You don't know how many dogs I've seen become lame. And when I say lame, I mean dogs that can't walk anymore, all because their nails have now grown around and they're growing in the pads. Does the general public um, know this? Some do, but not all pet owners do. Unfortunately, pet owners don't get a manual that says this is what you need to do. I and mean, we talk about nutrition, we talk about shots. No one ever talks about the importance of grooming. Nails, ears, trimming of the pads, um, brushing, combing is all a part of it. Just the brushing and combing aspect of alone. It's a natural process to dogs to shed. And that's one thing I want to tell everyone out there because a lot of times they want the dog to stop shedding. Bottom line, it's a natural process. Now, you as the um, pet owner or the groomer, by brushing and combing and removing all that, you're helping the process along. You see, there's one thing that man did to the dog, which actually probably hurt, was in a domestication process, dogs were domesticated to do certain jobs. You had terriers that were ratters. You had sighthounds, which were hunters. Um, you had bird dogs. And they all had a specific job. Now, some of these dogs still have jobs, but the majority of the pets that we see today are basically lap dogs. So what ends up happening is, when dogs were running through the bush and running through um, sticks and brush, believe it or not, that was pulling out coat. And that was helping the process 
of de-shedding and removing this hair. Now we have to repeat that process in another, in another way. We have to brush and comb because a lot of these dogs are laying on your couch. They're not running, they're not um, hunting, they're couch potatoes, you know, they're gaining weight just like we all are. So we, all, we have to come across and let everyone understand that brushing and combing is an important part because what happens is, a lot of times you see dogs now with skin problems. Skin problems are all part of non-grooming. A lot of them, not all of them. Of course it's nutritional and there's a lot of other things, aspects that um, go along with it. But there's a lot that are. And just by removing that dead hair and getting that natural coat to come through, which is also going to make your pet look a hundred times better. Brushing and combing your pet alone is going to pull out that natural vibrant color that you want. It's not going to hold that dull dead hair in there. It's going to give you the nice natural colors that come out. So it's an important process and you know what? Make your dog love it. The other thing I keep saying dogs, but this goes with cats as well. Cats are important. The only thing with cats, you gotta be a little bit careful because sometimes grooming them is like grooming a moving skill saw. So you take your time with them a little bit more. But you know what? If you, if you go out there and brush and comb your dogs every day, you're gonna build a bond. You're gonna find things that you may not want to find, but you'll find them in the early stages. And you know what? Everyone will be happy about it. I hope you like my talk. Joey, you just gave us a wonderful pet X talk about the importance of grooming and how your pet is a reflection of you and their health may in fact be a reflection of the grooming that you're doing. Why is that so true? You know, honestly, your, your pet, it's, it's like anything else. I compare pets as children. Okay, and I think a lot of people do in the, in the um, 20, um, 21st century is pets are as, as viewed as children. Now, you wouldn't have your child go out with messy hair, dirty clothes, looking dirty. So your pet is the same thing. That's what I say is a reflection of you because what ends up happening is when you got a dog that's looking dingy and smelling bad, well, I, I'll, I'll ask you a question. The bottom line is this, do you want to pet that dog? Do you want to sit next to when you go to your friend's house, your family's house, and that dog's there? And you may want to pet it, and you may want to, you know, play with it a little bit, but you kind of shy off a little because the pet stinks, the pet's dirty, the pet's matted. So absolutely, it's, it's a major reflection upon you. You also touched on the fact that grooming builds a better bond as well as a healthier pet. Explain a little bit more about groomers being a part of that health team for pets? Well, for a long time, we haven't been part of any team. And I think now there's more of an awareness of pet grooming in this day and age than there's ever been. I mean, I, like I said earlier, I've been in this business since 1974, so I've seen the leaps and bounds that, that basically it, it came from. Um, the bottom line is this, is I'm gonna see your dog or cat if you get it groomed regularly, which most people do, and we should, as groomers, should teach you that every four to six weeks, just like you would if you got your hair cut, I go every two weeks, I'm a little bit, um, I go a little sooner, but every four to six weeks, pets should go. And that's if they even just need a nail clipping. But I'm working on the dog, I'm feeling things, I'm looking at things, I'm finding things that you may not even find. I'm gonna give you a, an example, if I can tell you a little story here. We had a guy that brought in a Shih Tzu that was completely matted, knotted, real bad, and the dog couldn't walk, and the dog was at the veterinarian, had x-rays, 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 couldn't find anything. When we clipped around the feet, a toothpick had been jammed between the dog's foot, and it came right out. The dog walked and walked out. You don't know how, how happy I made these people, saying that everyone looked at it. Now, that wasn't the vet's fault. It was something it couldn't pick up, but the groomer found it, just like we find the lumps, the bumps, the ear infections, and the things that most people aren't looking for, we stumble across it because it's through the process of pet grooming. So I can tell you, go to your veterinarian, have this looked at. You also mentioned in your talk that nature did a lot of grooming previously. What can pet parents be doing to bridge that gap in between appointments to help their pets? The most important thing, and I touched on it earlier, is brushing and combing, because that's a natural process, shedding is natural so by helping it you know helping remove it i'll give you an example most of your hard coated terriers like your scotties and your your west highland white terriers and your karens 
they're all double coated breeds. A lot of people don't realize that they have a hard top layer and they have a soft layer underneath. The hard layer is the weather protection. The soft layer is the insulation. So it's like your sheetrock and your insulation in your wall is really what it's like. When it's neglected, what ends up happening is it doesn't know what to do. So now what ends up happening is your insulation may grow more than your top layer. So now you have no protection. All you have is a sponge, so when it rains. But by brushing and combing and helping remove that, because these dogs aren't running through the brush anymore to pull it all out, helping to just remove that, you're gonna, you're gonna keep a nice healthy coat. And also you're gonna have a, a pet that actually looks like it's supposed to look like. When you got them, I mean, people get these dogs because they like the way they look. I know we change them um, you know, for, for, for reasons um, that make it a little bit easier. But for the most part, you still want that dog to look like what it's supposed to look like, and it'll help. Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and for everything that you're doing in the pet world. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this PetX Talk. To learn more information about Joey Villani, visit joeyvillani.com. Funding for PetX Talks is provided by Pet World Media Group, your partner in all things pet media. Additional funding and considerations for PetX Talks is provided by Nature of Pets. Nature of Pets can help you optimize your pet's health with premium organic supplements from the Amazon and Andes Mountains. Visit natureofpets.com. Dogwise Publishing, all things dog. For all of your expert dog book needs, visit dogwise.com. Bound Animals, working towards big ideas that advance the safety and happiness of animals in our homes, our shelters, and everywhere in between. Visit foundanimals.org. Special thanks to Pet World Insider, taking you inside the world of pets. Visit petworldinsider.com for more expert radio interviews, articles, and videos. This has been a Pet World Media Group production.